So next up we have Dahl Winters and Dahl Winters is going to talk about open air cyan, which is accelerating carbon dioxide and removal through open hardware. This sounds super interesting. Uh, Dahl, I'll turn it over to you. You ready to go? We can yep, see you. hear you. So you're good to go. Excellent. Wonderful. I'm ready to go. I am going to share my screen and get us set. Okay. Here we are. Uh, let's see. All right. Everyone can see this perfectly. Great. So my name is Dahl Winters and I'm representing uh, myself as a member of the Open Air Collective today. We're a group of about 250 people whose primary goal in life is to do what we can to uh, accelerate carbon dioxide removal through open hardware. That means developing tools that can actually take the carbon out of the air uh, due to climate change. We actually have a need for that and, uh, and sequester that CO2 under the ground or in various places as solid forms. One thing I wanted to cover before I got started was some lessons from COVID-19. We have gone over several instances today about COVID-19 uh, at the Open Hardware Summit. And one of the things that really impacts me uh, is that the community needs to act quickly and decisively when a problem presents itself to avoid the worst possible outcomes. This is something that I learned very early on. If we had just put our masks on at the very beginning, we would not have the problem that we're in right now with the loss of lives and, and trillions of dollars uh, lost in, in terms of uh, financing. If we had just acted quickly and decisively when the problem presents itself, and the problem I'm talking about today in this talk is climate change. As far as how to deal with climate change, of course we need to re reduce our CO2 emissions, but we also have to remove the CO2 that's already in the air that we have put there over the course of 100 years. We put it into the air, this is how we take it out back out fast enough. We have these large plants which are popping up. This is an example of the Climeworks Orca facility, uh, one of the many carbon removal plants that are coming online as we speak. And down below is an example of the open air cyan. Um, two, one of two different designs that we have, a minimal and a larger, slightly larger unit, which you see here. Uh, these are units that actively do the same function, but from different approaches. We have the large scale top down approach, and then we also have the bottom scale or small scale bottom up approach. Both of these might intersect in the middle. They might each do their own amounts of work, but we need both approaches in the fight against climate change. And so today I'm going to present to you uh, why open hardware is so important in this fight against climate change. First, it's faster to iterate by crowdsourcing ideas for modifications. You can have a big plant that goes online that takes several years to get the amount of capital, the amount of funding needed to put that plant online, but a small unit that can have an equal impact to a large unit if there's many of them can have a, a, a quicker iteration time. Uh, it, it, it can be improved, it can be modified at a much faster rate than these larger units. Um, and so many small units can have an equal impact to a larger unit. Uh, you also have the concept of distributed computing versus a supercomputer. We all know that, that supercomputers can do a wonderful job, but we also need to have, uh, there's also a place for smaller machines that each collectively do a portion of the task and then yield a larger result. And then out of many, there's one. I think that's the same in our dollar bills or coins or so. Uh, e pluribus unum, out of many, one. Uh, we can actually have a solution to climate change. Uh, one of many solutions if we harness the power of open hardware. I'd like to add that the open hardware approach to carbon removal has been pioneered by open air members as well as the University of Michigan's Global CO2 Initiative Undergraduate Association. They have a wonderful initiative there. Uh, you should go check out their website. They have students which are developing these cyan units, several of them as we speak. Uh, they have been testing them and uh, um, producing outputs and helping us to actually um, uh, perform some, some uh, uh, near miracles in terms of getting uh, uh, carbon dioxide removed. They actually, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll present that. 
uh, uh, we can't. We can see the window with the slides, but the, the they're not actually being shown. You might want to change it. Oh, the slides are not actually being shown. Yeah. Oh no. Okay. We, we can we can see your window. Just try again. I think if you have multiple uh, windows, the wrong one's being shown. Okay. Has this been going on for the entire time? Uh, yeah, for a second here. Oh, oh, too bad. Okay, let me try this again. Uh, I'm going to share the screen and see if I can get, uh, let's see, this one. If I share the entire screen, maybe that this will work. I'm going to try to share the entire screen and then make this larger. Okay, wonderful. Can you guys see this now? Yeah, direct air carbon capture, and there's a molecule Perfect. and some trees. Cool. Perfect, yep. yes. Okay. Sorry about that. So, yeah, no worries. I, I think I've been, you, you could all hear me, so I won't go back over the slides because there's plenty to cover, but uh, I wanted to um, get started with direct air carbon capture and introduce the concept of the original direct air carbon capture unit, the original DAC units, are actually photosynthetic organisms. They're known as plants and cyanobacteria. These things have been removing CO2 since time models began. Uh, they will continue to remove CO2. They're just not doing it at a, at a rate that's fast enough to keep up with human inputs into the atmosphere. And I also wanted to touch base on cyanobacteria. These are tiny cells that collectively transform the early Earth's atmosphere. They're out in the ocean, on the seashore. Uh, they're even in freshwater. These cells, are really small, but we can follow nature's example and extend the analogy to use technology to remove carbon faster per unit space and time. So in this process, we are actually taking technology and applying our resources to do what nature does even faster because they could use a lot of help right now. So we want to introduce open air cyan. It is the first Oshawa certified direct air carbon capture unit. We also perform CO2 mineralization, taking that in the CO2 into carbon into carbonate form, solid form, and performs direct air capture all rolled in one. And we're here to support rapid innovation around carbon removal through these units. So to show you our uh, Oshawa certification, this was just very recent. We're really proud to have this and to be aboard uh, with, with an official open source hardware mission. And this is what the unit looks like and how this works. You have CO2 plus some input material that gets humidified. That input material is calcium hydroxide. A fan and an air pump push that material through um, the, the CO2 through the material, and then you get an output, which is solid form. You can remove CO2 directly from the air at home or school, weigh your, car, your material before and after, and then apply a conversion factor to get the amount of CO2 captured. This is something you can't easily do with a unit that is uh, water-based. Uh, this is still water-based, but we mostly have a powder that we use. Uh, and we wet that powder, humidify it to, uh, to get the CO2 running through. So documentation and instructions are located on this GitHub site. This is our official page for anything related to uh, cyan documentation. We have the wiki, which walks you through the assembly process. The parts lists are included here on the, the front folder. And there are some supporting system calculations and CO2 capture measurement examples already in place. So jot down that link. This is uh, just github.com openair-collective, and you'll be able to find cyan through that link. This is what the system looks like overall. The complete system is under $100. Uh, inside the system, there is a smaller system, which actually performs the bulk of the work, and that's where the CO2 gets stored as calcium carbonate. For just $20, you can build that inner system. Our performance is an average of about two grams of CO2 captured per 10 grams of input material. We use hydrated lime, which is available from any hardware store. There's also sources that are even lower carbon than the, the store-bought hydrated lime that are coming online, and we hope to see those come online within the next, the next year or so. The output material is inert calcium carbonate, and you can make products from your output, mixing it with biochar and a binder uh, in this case, we use Portland cement, but there's other binders that could be used for a low carbon footprint building material. 
So what will happen after I build one of these things? Well, for, for me, for example, I will know what it takes to remove CO2 from the air. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a relatively easy task once you get started, but to remove the quantities of CO2 that we each produce, you have to do a lot of this. And so that brings me to the second point. How do I lower my carbon footprint so my, my efforts have a greater impact? And does that mean I might be interested in supporting a larger unit to get me to net zero faster? We each collectively, or each individually, release about uh, 16 metric tons of carbon dioxide every year. If we need to get that to zero, how do we do that? And a larger unit is one of the ways that we can get there a little bit faster. We also have the ability to share results. And I mentioned before the University of Michigan uh, had actually documented the doubling of the performance of cyan. They went from uh, 1.75 grams to three grams of carbon dioxide captured per run uh, by just making a few adjustments to their, to their run, their, 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 their process. So that's been documented on the Cyan data share and the link to that is at the middle of the screen there. This is where you can, after you build your Cyan, you can go here to report and share data to aid in continuous improvement of this device. To prepare our mission forward, this is what we are anticipating we'll need for the next steps. And th these are things that makers can engage in. Advocates can also engage in. We basically need some engineering, some me mechanical expertise, uh, some automation expertise. And then for advocates, we just need people to get the word out. And the more people who actually engage it with Cyan, the more of these near uh, uh, miracles can actually happen with uh, actually making able to, making you able to um, produce more CO2 captured, um, optimizing the energy efficiency and such. So we need your help to input results and promising modifications on the Cyan data share. And so have a look at this. And then join us at the Open Air Collective. Our link is right there. We have community support on our Cyan channel on Discord, and we actually have a next Cyan build session on Saturday, April 24th. We have one coming this up uh, tomorrow, but it's, uh, it's, it's a small one because we, um, those people have already purchased their materials. Um, we anticipate if you are interested, you can join us for a larger one on April 24th. And with that, I'll see you guys at the, uh, the forum for discussion after this talk. And I thank the Open uh, Hardware Summit. Thank you very much.